Good morning. My name is Chris Ndikumana. I'm the host of the Kanguka Broadcast. You are about to listen to today's broadcast translated from Kirundi to English. Be blessed. Today's Wednesday. You're already used to me often talking to you on Wednesdays about how to prepare for the day. If you're a child of God, it's crucial for you to know that every time you wake up in the morning, you must consider that there are diabolical plans, there are satanic plans for the day, that's why you need to put your day into the hands of God. When you prepare for the day every day, it means you have the revelation of what is happening in the spiritual world. A child of God must have spiritual eyes. We are not led by sight, but we are led by faith. So, you need to understand that the day is prepared in advance by the enemy, and God also has a plan for this day just as the devil has a plan for it. So when you prepare for the day, you place everything in the hands of God, and God manifests himself through your prayer. When you pray in the morning, when you prepare for the day, it's like breaking down everything the devil has built, and you want what God has prepared to be fulfilled in your life on that very day. The day that begins has never existed. While you were sleeping, things were being prepared in the spiritual world. That's what I want you to understand. While you sleep at night, things are being prepared. That's why it's necessary to get up early in the morning to pray before starting the day. And when you pray in the morning, you entrust your day to God. Today, we're going to lean on Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It's a very important verse where Paul says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Here, you notice that the word of God says that we have been created in Jesus Christ. It is in Jesus Christ that we have been created for good works. The wrong deeds you do, the wrong deeds you see, that is not God's plan. God's plan is for good works. He created you to do good works for His glory. And when did God prepare them? He prepared them beforehand, before the creation of the world, before your birth. The good works, the good things that God wants you to do, He prepared them before you existed, before your father existed, before this day existed. There are good works that God has prepared for you today. There are circumstances that God has prepared for you today and your job is to practice those things. The verse says we should walk in them. In other words, we must put them into practice. My wish for you this morning is to walk according to the plan of God. What has God prepared for you this morning? There are circumstances you do not know. There are encounters you are unaware of. Every morning, there is a divine plan. You need to pray so that you can walk according to this divine plan, even if you don't know it. There are things you know and things you are unaware of. Many people pray in the morning, they prepare the day by asking for the fulfillment of their dreams and desires. But when you prepare the day, it shouldn't be like that. You need to seek God's will, you need to seek God's plan even if you don't know it. You need to pray and tell God that even if you don't exactly know what He wants you to do, the important thing is to walk according to His plan. When you pray this prayer sincerely, God will guide you through His Spirit. You don't know how things will work out. But you ask that the doors that are not of God be closed. Can you pray asking for doors that are not of God to be closed? It's not easy because there are things that you want. You absolutely want that door to be open. You want it to work. You want to succeed. But it may not be God's plan. If you have the revelation about preparing the day, you ask for God's will, you ask for what God desires to be fulfilled exactly as He wants. As I often say, it's not a sin to ask for something contrary to God's will. You can ask for something you want, even if it's not God's will, and it's not a sin. What's wrong is to insist and seek to have it realized exactly as you want. Even Jesus asked for something that was not in accordance with the will of God the Father. But the Word of God says that Jesus never sinned. So it was not a sin. When you pray in the morning and ask for something that is not in God's will, it's not a sin. But what I'm asking you is to accept that even if it doesn't come true, life goes on, and you continue to praise God. You can ask God for anything you want, but you need to know that it is the will of God that must be done. Sometimes God may want you to go through difficult times during the day. There are things waiting for you. Maybe it will be challenging, and God may allow that for your good. And when you ask for God's assistance, always ask for His will to be done and not yours. Remember how Jesus prayed. He asked that the cup would be removed from Him. He asked if it's possible for this cup to be taken away from Him. That's what Jesus asked. But He ended by saying, Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. And when He said that, an angel appeared from heaven to strengthen Him. There is always an angel that intervenes when you humble yourself and you ask for God's will. This morning, you need to bless the day and you need to place the day in God's hands. You need to accept that God will accomplish what He has already prepared. When you use that word, nevertheless, in your prayers and you accept to humble yourself before God's will, the angels will always intervene to strengthen you and give you the courage and steadfastness to walk in the perfect will of God, even if it's sometimes difficult.
We're now in the second part of the broadcast and we're going to continue our study of the Book of Chronicles. We are currently in 2 Chronicles chapter 5. Yesterday, I mentioned that we would spend more time on this fifth chapter. We will remain on this chapter throughout the week. Yesterday, I talked about very important things. Verse 4 says that all the elders of Israel came and the Levites carried the ark. And verse 5 says they brought up the ark, the tabernacle of meeting, and all the holy furnishings that were in the tabernacle. It was the priests and the Levites who brought them up. It is explicitly stated that it was the priests and the Levites who carried the Ark of the Covenant. No one else had the right to carry the Ark of the Covenant because it is consecrated. I told you that the Ark of the Covenant symbolized the presence of God. Whenever they had the Ark of the Covenant in war, they had victory. The Ark of the Covenant signified the presence of God. In the Temple of God, there could be very costly things, things made of gold and silver. Everything in the Temple of God was beautiful and valuable. But if the Ark of the Covenant was missing, everything else was nothing. It was as if the Temple of God was empty. Even during the construction of the tabernacle, God told Moses to begin making the Ark of the Covenant first. That's the essence. As I mentioned, the Ark of the Covenant is the image of Jesus Christ today. The Ark of the Covenant symbolizes Jesus. And Jesus is the image of the presence of God. He is the mediator between men and God. Without Jesus, you are nothing. Any prayer made without Jesus is a useless prayer. If you pray without Jesus, you are wasting your time. You can pray for hours and hours, but Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's why in John chapter 4, Jesus told the Samaritan woman that the time has come when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. You can pray, but you are not praying in truth. The truth is who? The truth is Jesus. There is no other sure way to reach God the Father without going through Jesus. It's important that I emphasize this. And we saw that it was the priests who carried the ark. But who are the priests today? Today, the priests are those who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says that we who are saved, who have accepted Jesus, we are kings and priests. It says that we are a royal priesthood. So, everyone listening needs to know that if you have accepted Jesus, you are considered a priest. That's why in the book of Hebrews, there is talk of priests, but there is also talk of a high priest. It is essential to understand that there is a difference between a priest and a high priest. The priests are the children of God. The priests are those who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But the high priest is Jesus spiritually speaking. In the temple of God, there was a place for the priests called the holy place. But there was also the most holy place. Only the high priest could enter there. No one else had the right to enter. In the time of Samuel, Samuel was the high priest. He was the one who could enter the most holy place. But the other priests remained in the holy place. We too are priests, but it is through Jesus the high priest that our prayers, praises, and sacrifices come before the throne of God. It is important to understand that without Jesus, your prayer has no value. The Word of God also instructs us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. You can find this in Romans chapter 12. The first verse says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. It is clear that we are asked to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. But how can you give your body as a living sacrifice? Every time you get up in the morning when you don't feel like it, Every time you isolate yourself in prayer even though your body does not want to pray. You may not feel like praying because you are desperate or you're going through tough times. But despite that, you pray, you fast, you refrain from eating even though you have the ability to eat. You come before God. That is a sacrifice. You give yourself for the work of God. That is a sacrifice of your body because your body craves comfort. When you deprive your body of comfort for the sake of God, that is a sacrifice. So, let's learn to give a sacrifice to God. There are those who spend the whole night in prayer. Others rise very early in the morning, at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. That is a sacrifice because the body does not want to get up at 4 a.m. The body does not want to get up at 5 a.m. The body wants to stay in bed until morning because naturally, the body desires comfort. This morning, I would like to emphasize that Christians should know they are priests. If you have accepted Jesus, if you have repented, you are a priest, and you must carry out the work of giving sacrifices. Every prayer you give, every praise you offer, give them in the name of Jesus, and it will be a sweet-smelling aroma before God. It is a grace to carry out the work of a priest. As I mentioned before, even tomorrow and throughout the rest of the week, we will continue to talk about chapter 5 because it contains many revelations that are in line with what we experience today in the New Covenant. Once you understand that you are a priest, you will be more motivated to give than to receive. God willing, we will continue tomorrow. May I am bless you and I wish you all a fantastic day. If you're blessed or transformed by Kanguka teachings, you can send us a WhatsApp audio on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.